For those who grew up poor, what did you consider a luxury? Going out to eat at a restaurant, and the big fancy restaurant was something like Red Lobster or Olive Garden. You got all dressed up and everything. I thought Sizzler was a fancy restaurant until I was in high school and some friends were talking about a steakhouse that actually was fancy and I was unaware of its existence but compared it to Sizzler. When I was a kid and my uncle who was a long haul truck driver came to visit we went to Sizzler and got dressed up for the dinner. I thought Chili's was an upper class establishment as well. My parents won 1500 bucks at a lottery once. They bought a new sofa to replace a 25 year sofa, a phone, and we went to a mid-range steakhouse. First restaurant for whole family. I was 20. Oh I love this. I first ate steak at the age of 19. When my brother-in-law bought me one from, I think, Outback Steakhouse. It was like that pupil expanding scene in Requiem for a Dream. I freaking loved it. For a working class kid raised on food stamps. I have a great appreciation for really good food today. For our anniversary my wife and I went to a fancy sushi place. And the chef was so delighted by our unabashed joy at how delicious we found the sushi he kept making us special rolls for free. And sat us up by the chef's station so we could watch it be made. I dream about this guy's sushi in this time of covid. I think growing up eating cheap stuff like liver, anism, and tongue means I appreciate some of the more unique flavors rich people find gross. The guy who thinks you need to grow up appreciating fine food is full of it you just need to be open to new flavors and the joy of food. No need to spend 40 bucks on a 6 year old's meal. A few years ago, my wife and I were at a nice seafood place for our anniversary. As I was looking at the menu, the table across from us was being served. And a kid who couldn't have been older than 11 had a $50 plate of crab legs put in front of him. First, no chance my parents would have ever taken me to a place like that. Second, no chance my parents would allow me to even look at any section of menu above $8. I don't know if anyone can relate, but in about 3rd maybe 4th grade, me and my twin brother had a music class where we were both required to buy a recorder, like a plastic flute thing. Well my mom said we didn't have the money so my twin brother and I tore the whole house up in search of $6 for two recorders. We brought a ziplock bag full of change pennies nickels, dimes etc. I think the teacher felt sorry for us, cause she paid for our recorders when the rest of the students left the room, gave us the ziplock bag back, thank you MRS, Albrecht, in high school, my boyfriend, who became my husband, and his family picked up pretty early on that I was poor, and that my family was pretty dysfunctional, they really let me into their family and took care of me in a sweet, not pity, way. I was super into art, so his mom found a neighborhood art teacher that did like basically small group art classes and it was so so cool. Anyway she usually charged like $100 for all the supplies, time, etc. My mom knew how excited I was, and I never asked for anything so she told me to ask the teacher to wait until her next paycheck. The teacher was like sure, by the time I brought that check to her. I think my boyfriend's mom talked to her, and she ripped it up and said I got a scholarship for the class. Honestly it gives me such good vibes thinking about it till this day. It's awesome you have two moms who love you. Your mom did her best to help you take the class and his mom, whether she paid for it or got you the scholarship, didn't take credit for it to outshine your mom. Plot twist, your mom did have $6 spare, but was also well aware of what two third grade beginners playing $3 recorders sounds like. Award speech. Until the age of 12, I thought that you weren't allowed to buy things that weren't on sale. My mom only bought things when they were on sale and or she had a coupon. So I thought that the non-sale items weren't being sold. Same. My mom has a funny story about that one. She says very little me was with her at the store. And I kept asking if random items were for sale. She'd be confused but would say yes. And I'd ask if we could get them. She'd say no. It took her a while to figure out that I had confused the terms for sale and on sale. I knew we only bought things that were on sale. So I was asking if each thing was on sale before I asked for it. Okay this is so cute I have to share and it's sort of related to your comment. When my daughter was learning to read I would ask her to read random things in the store on the road etc. One day we're in the grocery store and while in the meat section she looks at me with a shocked look on her face and says mom, they sell lion here. 
I said no they don't honey while looking at something else and obviously distracted with trying to buy food and keep count of what I'm spending. She wasn't having it and said it again forcing me to pay attention and ask her what kind of lion she thinks they are selling to which she replied. Not just any kind of lion. It's Sir Lion. In middle school I was on reduced school meals so it would be .40 for lunch. So my parents would always give me to quarters every morning for lunch. Now the cafeteria would also sell cookies which wasn't part of the lunch set 4.50 each. So saving .10 each day I could afford one cookie by Friday's lunch. Good times. You just triggered a memory from my childhood. Also had reduced lunch at $0.40. Also got $0.50 from my parents. Except I bought two pretzel rods with it which were 5 cents each. Or I would wait two days so I can buy a fruit roll up at 20 cents. In middle school my parents were doing better so I didn't qualify for reduced lunch. My parents gave me $2 a day to get subsidized lunch. But I was so programmed to worry about money. I would buy a dinner roll and a sunny delight. Because that totaled $0.90 and I would save the rest. I put the money in my sock drawer. Months later my parents found the money and asked where I got it. I explained what I was eating for lunch and I was saving the rest in case we need it. I didn't understand at the time. But that look on my father's face was heartbreak. He then ordered that I use the money to order a full meal going forward. AWW man I felt this one from both sides. Grew up pretty poor in Arkansas in a trailer. I literally got a daughter my bedroom for Christmas one year. It probably still was the best gift I ever received. I grew up poor in Arkansas too. We didn't have central heat or air so I had to chop firewood for our wood burning stove to stay warm in the winter. We lived way out in the boonies too. So convincing my parents to spend gas to take me to a friend's house was really hard. My BFFS parents cooked meth so their house was even more rough than mine. Boy if that ain't the most rural Arkansas story I've ever heard. Coming from a rural Arkansan. Law. I got pretty excited to be given my own bed. Same. Slept on an old futon for about 10 years as a kid. I could feel the metal bars through the mattress. My sister had a double sized bed however. I only got to sleep in a double sized bed once I moved out of my parents place. I also slept on a futon for most of my childhood. When I went to college I couldn't believe how amazing those crappy twin mattresses felt. Whenever one of my peers mentioned going home and how nice it felt to sleep in their own bed I couldn't relate. School parties where everyone brought something to share for lunch. If you don't bring something, you don't get to participate. I brought two carrots after not being able to afford school lunch for two years. Even the teacher laughed at me. My young self just decided that day that some people don't deserve lunch. I know the feeling. Our language classes always had potluck day where kids would bring dishes from whatever language the class was. I took French for three years and two of those years. My family couldn't afford to participate and my teacher decided to let me participate after she saw how much food everyone else brought. But she made a point to berate me for it. I didn't eat out of guilt. Well maybe a cup or soda or something. People like that shouldn't be teachers. That's just evil. For my school's spirit week, they had a thrift shop day, where most everyone dressed in old ratty clothes, or the weirdest stuff they could find in a thrift shop. Needless to say, as someone whose clothes were 80% second hand, it was an eye opener. Oh my gosh that's super short sated on the school's side. You underestimate the class cruelty of the US education system. For example, lunch debt. New shoes. I got treated like sh when I could get shoes because I was still poor and could only get knockoff chucks. People are f faces oh well. We're ordering pizza for dinner, and it isn't just plain mozzarella this time. Being able to get candy at a store, new school supplies, brand name food, brand name anything really, right? Reminds me of a funny story, back when started jackets were a huge thing. I had asked for one for Christmas, Dallas Cowboys of course, on Christmas day, I got a Dallas Cowboys pullover jacket that was a knockoff brand, I mentioned it not being a starter jacket and my mom replied oh it is, it's just part of their sister company, I wasn't sure if I should believe her or not, but I said okay, fast forward to first day back from Christmas break and I got some comments about my jacket not being a starter brand, I replied oh it is, it's just part of a sister company and the kids were like oh okay, cool. 
And that's how I got some cool points in 5th grade. New clothes. I grew up pretty poor. No TV. No toys. But had a Sears catalog. My dad got in a serious accident when I was in 4th grade and almost lost his life. He won a small settlement from the community college he was working at and I was able to buy new clothes for the first time in my life. But for this all I ever had were hand-me-downs from my cousin and donation clothes from the church. Most were worn to the point of having patches on the knees. The worst part about getting new clothes for the first time is I felt terrible the whole time picking out new clothes because I always felt like a financial burden to my parents. I remember going to Miller's Outpost and picking out typical 80s clothes. OP, TNC, etc. It's funny how growing up poor affects my everyday choices. For better or worse, I'll never outgrow some of the feelings I had as a poor kid and I feel for any kid who has to endure a childhood of poverty. It will affect them and their choices for the rest of their life. This, my folks always had three meals a day for us but clothes were always a treat. It might be a pair of pants and a shirt but my folks always made sure it was something that we were able to pick out and it always felt so special. They sacrificed a lot for it. In fact, my mom told me a few years ago that in order to provide that my parents didn't buy new clothes, or much of anything, for well over a decade when we were younger, with my first real job out of school I was able to take my dad to a shop and have him pick out a suit of his choice and get it fitted. He's confessed that it's one of the moments that's really stuck with him. He still has that suit and has worn it to both my sisters and my weddings. But yeah. Some of those feelings and habits don't really go away. Regarding clothes, they still get worn till they can't be patched anymore and I loathe to throw them away. I gotta stop there because this is actually making me surprisingly emotional. With my first real job out of school I was able to take my dad to a shop and have him pick out a suit of his choice and get it fitted. He's confessed that it's one of the moments that's really stuck with him. He still has that suit and has worn it to both my sisters and my weddings. This paragraph alone made me cry 3. OMG. I wore hand-me-downs or thrift shop clothes because we couldn't afford all new ones. At the beginning of the school year, my mom would give my siblings and I $50 to spend on new clothes plus we'd get a new pair of gym shoes. I struggled to pick out new things because I knew she and my dad were giving up something for us to have new things. Often. I'd get a couple of things and ask her to save the rest for later. Then I'd pick out the cheapest shoes I could. Even now, buying clothes for myself is super stressful and I only buy when it's on clearance or at goodwill. My mom had 7 children in 10 years, 1950 to 1960. I remember having a whole bottle, those smallish glass ones that came out of the machine for 10 cents, of soft drink to myself instead of sharing one bottle between all 7 of us. I was perhaps 5 years old. I still remember this as the best thing ever. My mum did the same but in the 80s. Looking back I think she had a pregnancy addiction. Life before my 6 siblings and life after were like to completely different lifetimes. I remember having stuff when we were very little but as we got older we just had more kids to look after instead of toys and food. I adore all my siblings and wouldn't change them for the world but I often wonder what having a real childhood is like and how it might have helped me pancakes but now as an adult and knowing how cheap pancakes really are i think my mom just didn't want to make them lol i'm imagining your mom just saying no we're poor for things she doesn't want to do my mom did that turned out we weren't even poor she was just cheap and a touch lazy staying at someone's house who wasn't poor like a relative or friend their house was also so clean beautiful pictures on the wall knickknacks on the counter and carpet you could play on because it was clean. I spent my entire teenage years hiding where I lived. I used to love flipping through home furniture catalogs like Ikea and fantasizing about what my dream bedroom would be. Complete with framed posters. A professional study table with a desk lamp and office doodads. Dresses that matched the hamper and trash bin. And an actual framed bed. My family didn't really have anyone over ever because we were honestly embarrassed we didn't have all the furnishings of a proper house. My mother used to consider any kind of cereal a luxury. They only had one box a month. My mom could somehow only find a way to afford Raisin Bran. I didn't try the fancy ones like Raisin Puffs or Fruit Loops until I moved out on my own. Maybe your mom was just trying to raise you slightly healthier. Brand name cereal was for the upper class, man. Every time I saw Reese's Puffs on top of the fridge, 
I knew tomorrow was gonna be a good day. Honestly didn't know that Pastor Ronnie was $1 until I was a grown a man. I thought that was some gourmet sh I made the Pastor Ronnie Fituxini Alfredo with sautéed shrimp and garlic butter Cajun seasoning for my so. They didn't believe it was from a $1 box. Parents staying home. I was always alone. Also, parents helping out with homework and school projects. They can't do that if they always work third shift. My projects were always notably shtier than everyone else's and it's not like the teachers cared about how much effort I put into them. Electricity lol. Thanks for paying the bill this month, mom. A hot shower. Cold showers were always available, but when you scraped enough cash to get some diesel fuel and get the burner to kick on long enough to have a hot shower man. Absolutely nothing better. Being allowed to turn on the heat during the winter, and also being able to hire a professional to fix broken appliances, plumbing, etc. Going to the movie theater. Having my own bedroom. Air conditioning. Sometimes we had a jacked up old window unit that would cool down my parents room on the hottest of summer nights and we would sleep in sleeping bags on their floor. Sometimes it was broke. Sometimes it just wasn't hot enough to justify running it. Never during the day though. That's what the library was for. Going places during school vacation. The kids would be all like what? You've never been to Ziz amusement park? No. Trisha. My family doesn't even have a car. Which is another luxury to me. McDonald's. Clothes that fit. Soda. Having a toy that other kids thought was cool. A new winter coat. I don't remember having a new winter coat until I was probably 14 or 15. They had always been hand-me-downs from my cousins. They were usually at least 10 years old by the time I got them and the stuffing would be all clumped up. My grandma would take me to Chuck E. Cheese on my day and give me a bunch of tokens. That sh was lux. Restaurants were definitely somewhere at the top of my list. I lived through the tail end of apartheid in South Africa so we weren't allowed into restaurants. Also, non-iceberg lettuce, dairy products, like a full glass of milk, cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt, flavored milk, lawns, a dining table and family meals at the table, vacations that didn't involve staying with relatives, Doritos, or any name brand chips, actually. Renting a movie from Blockbuster the first weekend of every month. My brother and I got to pick any movie we wanted as long as it wasn't rated R. On really special nights, we even got a 2 liter bottle of Sprite for the family to share. Taking a bath, I mean we bathed every night, but it was by heating up water, that we would go to the park down the road to get in 5 gallon jugs, and filling up a mop bucket to wash off with. Staying over at a friend or family member's house and getting to take an actual shower was amazing though. Some of these posts make me cry. Buying new clothes. The days I justify ordering all kinds of dumb stuff online but I've always felt a mental block on buying new clothes. It feels like an unjustified luxury because I always got by on secondhand clothes and free t-shirts. Having breakfast. It's gotten to the point where I can't eat in the morning because my body is so used to waiting. I used to go through hundreds of feet of all kinds of vine, thorn, brush, plenty of poison oak too. Be covered in burrs, chiggers, ticks to get at wild blackberries. They had thorns too, and fill my milk jugs with them. They were down in a low boggy place that was just inaccessible. No trail, no openings. Just a hell wall of green that led up to some swamp bog here and there. So plenty of mosquitoes too. Because my folks sure weren't buying them by the pint. Not even as good as the wild ones. And once I had tasted them. I f I wanted them. Those things were my girls before puberty. I'm sure I went through more to get my snack of them than I ever did for anything in my life and I wasn't even a fat kid. I just obsession. Come back home all bloodied and scratched up my dad telling me I looked like I jumped inside a sack full of cats. Helping himself to my jugs of treasures. Mom with the Neosporin. The cure for it all. Chef boy RD. Not even kidding. Pop tits and toaster strudels. Owning books. I remember in 8th grade on my birthday at school one of my teachers asked me what gifts I had received. He asked in front of the whole class. I excitedly shared that I would be getting contact lenses. 
My parents let me choose one thing that I wanted and I desperately wanted to stop wearing the broken glasses I had, which I usually didn't wear. One of the boys in class made a comment like contacts aren't a present, and my teacher had to explain to him again in front of everyone that for some families they were too expensive not to be a luxury. After that experience I worked two and three jobs in high school so I could buy myself and my brothers the things we needed. The first thing I bought with my money from my first job as a hostess at a diner was a queen size bed because my twin mattress was about 20 years old and at 15 I was having back problems and issues with rusted springs poking me. Christmas presents. I was a kid and one year for Christmas when I was young. Before I could recognize that I was making any kind of larger point. I said that I wanted my parents to just give my presents to the kids who didn't have anything. But I didn't know that I was one of those kids. I wonder what they thought when a kid said that to them. I wonder if it hurt them or inspired them. The really important thing is relationships. The people in our lives aren't some kind of replacement for things. People are the most valuable things to us. F the garbage. Don't buy anything this Christmas. Just spend it with your loved ones and genuinely express your love for them. That's the value. Things are garbage. People make a difference.